everyone and welcome to another amazing video from Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Ayer, vampiric female monster from Amazonian folklore. The Curse of La Patasola explained. Vampiric or demonic stories from civilizations other than European folklore are the most interesting ones. Each fabled creature deserves its own film, but when Hollywood fails to deliver, we can always count on our indie filmmakers to take the risk and bring these animals to life on the big screen in some form or another. The Curse of La Patasola by Renegade Creative is based just on Central and South America succubus like creature whose title basically means one-legged. A.J. Jones, the co-author with Sean Mathis, makes this feature film debut. Jones also appears in the film as one of the leads with his wife producer Gilly Jones. Patasola, a vampiric creature who arises out of the forest when male hunters or loggers begin to fantasize about women is enough to send us running in terror. That is assuming according to mythology. Patasola didn't disguise itself as a beautiful creature only to show its horrible true form when it was too late. Isn't it thrilling and horrifying? This is the tone that the makers of the independent horror, the curse of La Patasola, wants to achieve. I think I saw him walk by a minute ago. Sarah! The narrative seems fantastic with a lot of potential for frightening situations. However, because the history originated in South America, all retellings of it should include South American locations and characters. The movie is well-crafted but employing Western characters to investigate a Southern American folktale seems overdone and unneeded. A horror film's beginning portion typically relies on a cold opening, which involves the sudden death of unknown characters. This section of the film aims to create the tone and quickly introduces the threats that will soon befall the film's key protagonists. The chilly start of The Curse of La Patasola, on the other hand, offers little to build up to the plot. In actuality, all we know is that in the 19th century in South Colombia, when a couple secretly kisses in the woods, the male is assaulted. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Stop! When you hear her song, it's too late to run. The Curse of La Petasola 2022. The movie is just another generic horror film set in a remote woodland location where humans are terrorized by an evil ghost. It starts with two suffering couples who are stalked by the famous, infamous monster putting their marriages, morals, and desires to survive the test. The film represents actor-writer A.J. Jones' directorial debut with a script founded by Jones and Florida native Daniela Gonzalez. It is a character-driven drama that we believe will appeal to a wide range of audiences. James and Danielle are supposed to be close friends, yet neither their friendship nor their relationship with Sarah and Naomi appear plausible. The tension in the automobile wasn't enough. The eerie woodland that surrounds the four passengers gets increasingly terrifying as the sun sets. A stiff park ranger cautions the carload of passengers about a huge frequency in the region but does little to deter the four visitors from venturing into Bear Lake equipped only with a flare gun. I got a flare gun in here, just in case. On the way to the camping ground, Daniel and Naomi, the two couples, are having an ugly dispute. Sarah is stuck in the midst of an attempting to persuade Daniel to quit antagonizing Naomi. Daniel is slamming feminism for making males seem bad, and Naomi is hitting back with more venomous retorts while blaming James for attempting to play the mediator instead of supporting her. Along the way, the party is intercepted by a policeman who advises them that there has been an unusually high number of incident reports involving missing individuals recently and that they should be taking precautions. While she narrates the narrative, Daniel stops her and attempts to show her sexist character while highlighting her feminism. Sarah and James are unable to intervene. All they could do is try to cool things down. Unbeknownst to them, it is the heat that ignites a fire within Daniel and Naomi. It's not love or anything remotely like it. They both have a feeling of authority, or rather, the sense of authority that Naomi and Daniel assign to one another. They eventually wind up kissing one another, which predictably enrages La Patasola. This is exactly what Naomi intended when she said the above-mentioned sentences word for word. La Patasola's arrival was beckoned by the unfaithful kiss. Were you checking me out last night? 
Naturally, they disregard this advice and continue with their camping trip. Naomi and Daniel's squabbling resumes as once tents are removed and the fire is lit. Meanwhile, Naomi claims to have heard the scariest ghost stories. As they tell them, Naomi then tells a story of a lady who was murdered because she had cheated on her husband. The woman's sadness and suffering were so tremendous that she transformed into a supernatural creature that now punishes individuals who cheat on the people they ostensibly love. Naomi is forced to recite the legend's name, La Patasola, even if she does not want to. La Patasola is a cursed ghost who haunts woodland regions and exacts retribution on dishonest men by killing them while inhabiting the bodies of disloyal women. La Patasola occupies these bodies because she is a monstrous monster in the true form. The opening sequence of the film takes place in Colombia and depicts an anonymous couple enjoying a nocturnal tryst in the woods and enjoying an evident experience with La Patasola. The woman is a mother and wife, but she is not married to her boyfriend in the woods. What follows is a paraphrase of what the legend says. La Patasola's mesmerizing voice leads Daniel deep into the woods at midnight. Naomi is also possessed by her, and at the end of the film, Daniel is murdered by a possessed Naomi, and Sarah murders Naomi in retaliation for La Patasola's, staging a love between Daniel and Naomi in front of her. La Patasola exacts her vengeance on the unfaithful guy by murdering the lady in the same way that her husband had killed her for adultery. The truth that La Patasola murders Naomi in Sarah's hands serves as her punishment. Her husband also murdered her for being unfaithful. Then the man hears another woman's voice nearby calling, Come find me, several times. So he leaves his girlfriend to explore the area of the woods where he believes he heard the voice. When the man can be heard shouting in the distance, it's easy to anticipate what follows next. Luciana Fallhaber plays La Patasola in the film, which mainly consists of her strolling about in a white outfit and attempting to appear mysterious. Any monster visuals in the film are just unimpressive. In order for La Patasola to occur, someone must cheat. Hence, the narrative demands a cheater. Two couples that are all alone in the woods become four people who are unhappy in their relationships. The 40 minutes of character building, just so the plot Plot may contain two persons cheating seem to be excessive. Furthermore, because the marital squabbles go on for so long, whatever tension built at the bonfire scene is buried behind lifetime movie circumstances. For La Patasola to happen, somebody should cheat. Consequently, the narrative demands a cheater. The 40 minutes of character constructing just so the plot might contain two people cheating appeared to be over the top. Is forgiveness a liberation? The other side of the story. Following the murders of Daniel and Naomi, there is a chase scene in which James and Sarah attempt to flee from La Patasola, who has become her monster form. It appears that she had no intention of injuring James as he was clean. She was chasing Sarah because, according to her, she would be in the same situation as La Patasola's spouse. She had been cheated on. Patasola wished for Sarah to trust Daniel, just as she wanted for her husband to accept her. La Patasola Sola calms down as Sarah puts on Daniel's ring and forgives him. Mateo, most likely her husband's name, escapes her lips as she peers at James and Sarah, both of which had forgiven their husbands. She wishes her husband had forgiven her. La Patasola appears to be free from her shackles. Her sheer existence at the end of the film, though, suggests otherwise. She wouldn't be around if she was liberated. As a result, the film leaves us with an open ending. Vampiric Female Monster from Amazonian Folklore The Patasola, or One Leg, is one of the numerous fables in South American mythology about female creatures from the bush that emerge in the middle of the woods to ruse male hunters when they ponder about women. The Patasola takes the guise of the beautiful and attractive women, typically in the appearance of a loved one who pulls a man far into the bush away from his friends. There, the Patasola displays her full horrific form as a one-legged monster with a ferocious vampire-like desire desire for human blood and flesh, attacking and consuming her victim's flesh or drinking their blood. A thriller's starting part commonly depends on a cold opening, which includes the abrupt passing of obscure characters. The target of this part of the film is to make the one tone and to rapidly introduce the threats that will soon befall the film's key protagonists. Following the murders of Daniel and Naomi, there is a chase scene in which James and Sarah attempt to flee from La Patasola, who has become her monster form. It appears that she had no intention of injuring James 
Jesus, he was clean. She was chasing Sarah because, according to her, she would be in the same situation as La Patasola's spouse. She had been cheated on. Patasola wished for Sarah to believe Daniel, just as she had wished for her husband to forgive her. La Patasola calms down as Sarah puts on Daniel's ring and forgives him. Mateo, which is most likely her husband's name, escapes her lips. La Patasola appears to be free from her shackles. Her sure existence in the final scene, though, suggests otherwise. She will not be around if she was liberated. Why should you watch The Curse of La Patasola? The Curse of La Patasola opens with a prologue set in the 19th century Colombia. Unnoticed, a pair disappears into the woods, or so they believe. A voice from the wood calls to them. The woman wisely advises her partner to depart. He, of course, pursues the unidentified speaker. Screams and noises of unseen brutality are heard. Remember, and become accustomed to the inevitable aspect. The director based their picture on La Patasola, a South American folklore creature that as far as I know has never been used on screen before. There's something unique in The Curse of La Patasola. We have the wearing characters who I can't imagine become friends. James had purchased a ring and intends to propose. Naomi is a strong-willed black lady. Daniel is the sort of man who should have been in charge of everything, but he's unemployed and surviving off his wife's salary. The ranger issued a warning that only in the first 15 minutes and in the movie, the creature is either kept off screen or the scenes are too dark to see anything until the last several minutes when you'll see why they kept it concealed. Instead, it provides us with practically unending discourse. Much of it is about the couple's relationship problems. Some flaws are that the horror is restricted to the rare, did you hear that moment or pretty much everything Daniel says. As a result, the film's effort at a storyline surprises is both predictable and comical. When the curse of La Patasola's realization, its intentions to be a horror film in the last act, it adds fuel to the fire by dismissing all of La Patasola's legend. It was evident from the beginning that they would have to do so in order for the film to succeed. A few things are correct in The Curse of La Patasola. The actors do a good job of conveying the discomfort of a friend's weekend gone tragically wrong. I'd rather they still be instilling fear of a dangerous camping trip, but I'll take what I can get. She's called La Patasola. The best moment in The Curse of La Patasola is one in which two ladies talk openly about their lives while having a cigarette. Naja Bradley is by far the most fascinating and charismatic performer in the company, and her confidence and undivided focus carry most of the sequence. Gilly Jones pulls up her part by the bargain, but Bradley is the actual movie star in the movie. Bradley's outstanding performance was responsible for most of what I liked about The Curse of La Patasola. Aside from Bradley, The Curse of La Patasola doesn't provide much much in the way of originality, which distant cries from creepy voices, heavy fog, and ridiculous jump scares the film goes with the flow of your normal modern bad ghost demon monster scenario. A.J. Jones directs a pretty conventional, very basic take on this well-known genre. The Curse of La Patasola, which was released on the same day as The Legend of the La Llorona, is the better of the two horror films based on Central American stories, but that's a fairly low standard. Now the performances, some are sloppy, some are good, but for the most part, La Patasola is a one-of-a-kind drama. I will say it's very solid in the beginning. Maybe three times those scars were nicely done for a movie that didn't have a huge budget. It's also clear that the director has researched horror and cliches, since the photography was rather superb for what I witnessed. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone!